Hello and welcome to another Ask Guillem for Sport and uh, there's so much to discuss starting with the end of the season of course let me just bring my notes up so we can go through some of the things that um, have happened or how I perceive they happened starting with what I think has been one of the most emotional parts of, uh, of La Liga this season and that has been um, Unai Bustinza, the captain of Leganes Minutes, bef minutes after they actually um, were conferred as a second division team, he was um, emotional. He was breaking down, of course. His team had gone down, but they'd done it, given absolutely everything. And he was saying that um, at a time where people are suffering health-wise, financially too, um, if there was anything to learn from the last few weeks of Le uh, Leganes, in which they went and the Javier Aguirre with the possibility of being dead practically, to the possibility of actually um, being safe in the last few seconds, even few minutes of the game with three clear chances with 2-2 against Real Madrid. In fact, it was the only team that took two points of, of Real Madrid. I know they had won the league already, but uh, Real Madrid managed to get 10 victories in a row and it was Leganes that managed to uh, get a point out of them. Well, he was thinking, he was saying that um, if you can learn something out of this is that uh, it's worth while the sacrifice is well while the fight until the last minute. He was trying to say that you have, you know, fighting until the end, um, it is worth while even if you don't get to your target. That uh, life should be made of that, of um, of making sure that uh, you never give up. And he was saying that uh, I don't know if he prepared it or not. It seemed quite natural. And, and it seemed like a very good message. For me, when football goes beyond the result and it becomes uh, you know, a message to society, a message to, to people, uh, that's where I see, it's, I see football in its glorified shape, in its, in its, in its best shape. So it was emotional. Uh, Javier Aguirre, as you know, has left Leganes. Uh, they will be in the second division. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what happens with uh, Javier Aguirre speaks perfect English, so I could see him going uh, anywhere in the world, really, that he wanted. But uh, 10 years ago, he said he was retiring, and look, he's still at it, 61 now. Uh, fantastic job that he did with a team that had uh, 13 players, half of the squad, whose contract ran out the 30th of June and still managed to, uh, to battle for to stay in the first division, having lost... Uh, the two best strikers in Esnesiri who went to uh, Sevilla and Braithwaite who went to Barcelona not to be used a lot and with Oscar Rodriguez his other top player and top striker being injured and then at some point looking like he didn't want to join the squad as his contract ran out the 30th of June eventually he participated in the last in the last game but all in all it was um, it was a uh, the perfect example of a team maximizing uh, its potential via um, via believing in the leader and believing in the idea and working really hard for each other. They didn't get to where they wanted to because the obstacles were massive, but uh, they gave us a very really good example that of what you know what a good football team is. Other things that have happened, uh, of course, you know, Espanola Mallorca went down. Espanol uh, is trying to get Mallorca's manager, uh, Vicente Moreno. To, uh, uh, to lead the charge in, back into the first division. We will see if they convince him. He's got offers from all the teams. One is Alaves in the first division. Uh, but Espanyol will have in the second division 50 million euros, the biggest budget uh, in the division, that's the income, but then 40 million euros to spend in transfers and, um, and in, in wages, which also make them by far uh, the richest club in the second division. Let's hope that that works because they will have to get rid of 15 players to reduce the wages to a half uh, and then bring another 15, so it won't be easy. What else we got? Um, for me, Diego Martinez, manager of the season. Uh, he went from take them, of Granada, of course, went from take, take them to the first division uh, last season to actually semi-finals of the Cup for the first time in 51 years. Victories, famous victories against uh, Valencia or Barcelona and qualify them for the Europa League for the first time in their history. With um, the third lowest salary cap in the division, 37.9 million euros. 
that was all. Compared to Valencia, 177 million, and what you see, somebody who's done really well. Uh, now, Valencia won him, uh, but I think he's going to give an opportunity to Granada. He would like to stay. His contract was renewed until 2021, as he was deserved. That was, I think, last November. But he wants to hear from Jan Lizang, the, manager, uh, the chairman, the owner of the club, and see what the plans are. But I think he wants to lead Granada into the um, uh, Europa League. A little bit of a bonus for next season. Be careful with it, though, uh, because Espanyol uh, had to get involved from very early on, and that uh, they paid a price for it. Um, in any case, uh, Granada, one of the big stories of the season. Villarreal, as you know, uh, Cazorla, who is now going to Alsad with Xavi Hernández, has left Villarreal. Uh, that's the last, the end of his career, perhaps a two, year, two years in Qatar. And the idea, as I told you, he is at some point to join Mikel Arteta in the coaching staff, maybe at Arsenal in a couple of years, who knows. But, uh, but he's gone, so is Bruno, the uh, captain, the famous captain of Villarreal, who after three years battling with injury, he came back just to say goodbye. Uh, really um, impressive thing to do because basically they didn't, he didn't need to come back, but he did it to be able to say, look, I battle and I, I fought and I beat you, football. It's me deciding to leave, not you leaving me. Great news that uh, Real Sociedad will also be in Europe, uh, also Atletico Madrid and, and uh, Lopetegui with Sevilla. They've done really well. And I know he was criticised at some point because the team didn't play so good football and he was too conservative. What happened was, is this is a team that needs time to create the layers to be the, 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 as good as they can be. They can get better, uh, but they didn't score enough goals. So a lot of the time, decisions were made based on that. And, uh, and the consequence of it is in the stats at the end of the season. 23 out of the 50 games of, uh, of the season, uh, they had a clean sheet. And you build from there. Uh, obviously, I'm sure that Lopetegui will agree that Sevilla has to attack better. But in any case, this is a team that, yes, it can improve. Even though Ever Banega is leaving as well. But I feel that Campaña of Levante will be a good replacement if they go for him, former Sevilla player anyway. Uh, how about the top two? Barcelona and Madrid. There's questions uh, on, um, on Twitter from you about that. Uh, there is questions from Nikat Alisset. Alisadet, any possible presidential elections uh, this summer for Barcelona? I'd say no, because the board of Barcelona needs to tie things up before leaving in a, in a year's time. Uh, financially, uh, things that they are halfway through still, uh, they want to make sure that, uh, that the, uh, the team is, there is a, the continuation of the recycling of the side that, that they have started. There's, those are the reasons why, and they need to find somebody that can replace Bartomeu. As you know, he cannot; he's done two mandates. He cannot be in the next elections. But that side of that, that side of um, Barcelona supporters, and there's a bunch, big influential bunch, bunch of them that back Bartomeu. They would like to have somebody else representing them in the elections. So no chance. He's asking about Dembélé. Dembélé won't play this season. There's another one on um, on Barcelona. The new team generation: Fati, Ricky, the young plans for them. Well, that's the transition that perhaps is difficult to see now as there's so much focusing on the now. So much focusing uh, that you could see even a, such a quick evolution of, of the situation between the coach and the players. From the words of Messi, after the Osasuna game, uh, he was critical uh, about the board, about the coach, about the players. He was talking, saying that the way that Barcelona plays won't take them very far, won't help them beat Napoli, that since January things have gone, have gone very bad or worse, and that uh, it's an irregular team, that it's a weak team, all that. And then, normally, you wouldn't hear from him for weeks, months, but he actually came out as well uh, after the last game against Alaves, and he was more calm. He was saying that, you know... There are positives, and that of course uh, he was happy with the attitude of the team against Alaves. Were beaten by five goals, and pointing out that perhaps that will help Barcelona to go uh, to do well in Europe in the Champions League. And it's because in the middle there was a meeting between Kike Setién and um, Leo Messi, a private one, that was eventually leaked, I think, by the club, 
that wanted to send a message after a campaign to try to get rid of Kike Setien from certain angles and certain supporters and, and media. Um, but having the club decided that Kike Setien will stay until the end of the season, I don't think he will be there next season. Uh, but until the end of the season, the campaign was to get rid of Kike Setien right now and not be present in the Champions League. The club decided that he will stay on, but needed the backing of the, of the players. So I don't know if Kike Setien was thinking of that or was told, go and meet Messi, but there was a meeting that was leaked, out of which it was the second truce in, in a short period. Because I told you the story that after the draw against Delta, there was big works exchanged between, between the top players of Barcelona and uh, Kike Setien. The next day, again, there was a, a bit of a, a truce and it was like, guys, I know that you can get rid of me. That's what Kike Setien said. But it will be better if we work together. There isn't much, many, many games left. There is lack of trust, but this second trust, the truce took place and hence the words of, uh, of Messi against the, uh, after the Alaves game, which everybody hopes he helps everybody. He helps Barcelona. Everybody hopes that he helps Barcelona to actually beat Napoli and go find the Champions League. We will see. What we saw, though, was uh, the return of the young, that Ricky Puch helps, and also Fatih with the dynamism of the side, and that's where I think uh, Barcelona should focus on the now and on in the future. But the plan is to do exactly that. I think we mentioned it before. Look at uh, those three, yes, Fatih, Ricky, uh, Ricky Puch, the young, but Araujo as well, somebody they trust, the centre-back. Obviously, Ter Stegen staying is, a, is good news. Uh, the fact that um, Trinchao is coming over and it adds something different up front that they convinced in Barcelona that uh, Lautaro Martinez is coming on. This is, this is part of the transition that should take place and that what the board wants to leave um, with. A Barcelona that's ready for the next uh, manager, whoever it is after one year's time. But next season... This board will have to find a coach, perhaps a manager of the ilk of uh, Lauren Blanc, who's uh, proposed himself as a, as a manager, somebody like Zidane, if you like, who won't rattle the cage, uh, but will take decisions as he's a strong personality. Perhaps that's what's needed. We will see, but I don't think Ike Setien will be there. No matter what happens with the Champions League, I believe, but uh, we'll see. Questions, a lot of questions on, on Real Madrid, and uh, we'll finish with that. Uh, are Real Madrid willing to give Jovic another chance or send him on loan? Um, they wanted him to give him on loan as late as, sorry, as early as the beginning of the season when he first arrived. They thought, no, it's not going to work. So yes, they will. They will like to get to get something out of um, out of, of him of selling him, but the market is so slow they may have to stick with him. Is he then the Lucas coach ever or the co top coach in world football? is uh, what uh, Charles of NYE is asking. He's made so much history with Real Madrid in such little time. Yes, he's won a, a title every 19 games. Unbelievable. Um, arguably surpassing even Pep's successes. What do you think of him? Pep was different in that he changed football. That's a big thing. And also he did it winning. Uh, and winning, for instance, all the titles in one calendar year, the first calendar year that he was in charge. Uh, but yes, uh, Zidane has done really well and for him this victory is a massive victory because uh, he put all the, all, most of the eggs in this basket. He wanted everybody involved, he wanted to convince the veterans that there was still a last dance for them and wanted to bring youngsters that uh, help him give strength and dynamism to the side like, like Valverde and eventually Benicius and, and Rodrigo and, and so on. And he's managed to do all that really exceptionally well. Uh, this magic is how he puts everybody together and makes them feel important James and Bale is a different story they just James uh, wants to leave quite clearly Bale and Zidane just simply don't understand each other and I wrote a lot on it uh, for the, a blog for the BBC which I recommend you reading for more detail but, um, but he's shown more he's shown by adding Valverde to the squad and to the team um, He's added that strength that helped the team defend, defending high up, be close together, have four midfielders, uh, be good in the pressure high, which, you know, if you recall possession, uh, Ramadi can kill you in the counter. But also, uh, by being close together and the quality of those midfielders means that they don't lose so much possession, so they don't get counter-attacked. A lot of things that have worked well, starting with that move for Valverde, 
getting Valverde into the team and has made the team uh, having different options, at least four ways, four formations, which help to have all the players involved. So he's growing as a coach. He's a better coach than he was when he first started and when he won the three Champions League, amazingly enough. And he's the first league without Cristiano Ronaldo. All that helps. Sammy, 1679, is saying why is Ramos being branded about as a top three Real Madrid player of the season? When Benzema, Casemiro, Varane, maybe Courtois have been better. Um, how can you calculate that? Uh, the man has scored 11 goals and he's a centre back. He's a leader, uh, has done really well defensively, the best defence in the history of La Liga for Real Madrid. So he's got something to say. Uh, I would have put ahead of him Benzema, perhaps, but he is certainly one of the top three players. At, uh, at Real Madrid. I did say I was going to talk about other things. Uh, let me remind myself of what I put in the tweet so I don't miss anything. Uh, about Emery, so Villarreal, uh, things that they think that they convince him to, to be the manager. Miss, uh, Messi and Kike Setien, I've already told you, Diego Martinez, uh, manager of the season, already explained. Uh, I, told, I told one or two of the keys of Real Madrid winning the league. Uh, Bale's future, just a quick thing. He wants to stay until the end of his contract in 2022. That's two more seasons, even if he doesn't play. He wants to do that. My impression is that he will retire after that. Um, how those two years take place, I don't know, because you cannot force him out. Uh, he doesn't want to go anywhere else unless he gets paid much more, and he won't because nobody will do that for a 31-year-old who... Um, even though he's very talented, obviously, uh, I imagine has been damaged in the eyes of many because of what's happened with Real Madrid. I would, you know, uh, but mostly the reason why uh, clubs won't go for him because of his talent, despite, despite of his talent, is his wages. His wages are very, very high. Um, damage or no damage, there's an argue, you can make an argument about that. Maybe others would say, actually, uh, he hasn't played because he hasn't been allowed and more on that is in the article that I wrote. Basically, whatever um, whatever the uh, the reason, nobody will go for him. And even though in the past, Ramadi will let him go for free, now they are thinking, actually, we don't want to fall for the trap that he put in us in, as in, you want to leave, don't you? And, um, you know, you want to force us to do it under your conditions. Uh, well, Bale is saying, if you want me to go right now, pay me everything, every single penny, from now until the end of my contract. Let's see if Real Madrid does that, because as I said, at the moment it's a battle of wills. But what a situation for somebody that is, has been one of the top players in recent times, and I think he's got more to give. But I do feel that he may retire um, at the end of his contract with Real Madrid. That's what I think. Robert Moreno uh, is the other thing I wanted to mention, because he was at Monaco, only 12 games. I think the manager, the uh, sporting director of, of Monaco wants to put his own people at the club so he hasn't been allowed to grow and it's a shame that the confinement men, that the French league uh, hasn't been allowed to play until the end because you would have seen more of what Robert, uh, Robert Moreno can do. So an opportunity for, um, for a good club to actually uh, take on the former Spanish uh, manager and, uh, and as I say, it's a shame that uh, Monaco haven't stick with him but I'm sure he'll find... Uh, a good club to go to. That's it for now. Uh, there'll be a break now until the Champions League. Uh, I'm sure you'll appreciate that I need it. And, uh, and I'll see you then.